today we're going to talk about a womanizing rotten scoundrel. Someone the old timers might have called a rake. This handsome womanizer, well, that's debatable, but let's go with it for now. His name was Berrien Kennard Upshaw, better known as Red. And this rotten womanizing scoundrel would become one of the most famous characters in film and book history. Follow me. Here we are in Raleigh, and as you can tell by the church bells, it's got to be Sunday. Well, as the story would have it, Red Upshaw was a great athlete, but he had such a bad attitude that he never succeeded. He then enrolled in the U.S. Naval Academy, but for his lack of character, his stay was short-lived. He became a bootlegger, but most people would have considered him to be a loser, except for one thing. Red had a way with the ladies, and he married well. Red married a beautiful, wealthy woman, and then Red did what Red did best. He treated her terribly, he cheated on her, he beat her, and then he left her after two months. Well, the woman got on with her life. She actually started writing a book, a little thing called Gone with the Wind. That's right, folks. Red Upshaw was Margaret Mitchell's first husband, and she used that snake as the character reference for the bootlegging, rakish Rhett Butler. The only thing was, she wrote the character of Rhett Butler as the man she thought she'd married, not the man he actually was. Although you need kissing badly, that's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often, and by someone who knows how. Oh, and I suppose you think you are the proper person. I might be. Tonight, I am here just as a spectator. I want to see Gone with the Wind the same as you do. And this is Margaret Mitchell's night and the people of Atlanta's night. Hello. In 1939, the Pulitzer Prize winning book was turned into an Oscar winning film and we all know the rest is history. But do we? Well, Red was quite the vagabond and without his famous wife at his side, he pretty much disappeared into obscurity. That is until 1949. That's when a Galveston, Texas newspaper reported that one Biriam Kenyard Upshaw had leaped to his death from the fifth story fire escape of a Salvation Army building. And that leads us to here, the Oakwood Cemetery. Ah, and here we are. It's hard to believe that under this undistinguished tombstone lies the inspiration for one of the most dashing characters in history. Although his ex-wife only wrote one book, it made her extremely famous and very wealthy. By all accounts, she had a happy life with her second husband, John Marsh, who was none other than Red's best man at the wedding. Sadly, Margaret Mitchell was struck and killed by a speeding car while she and her husband were crossing the street on their way to see A Canterbury Tale. Margaret Mitchell died in 1949, and it will be remembered forever in history. Red Upshaw, not so much. And frankly, Red, I don't give a damn. Well, I hope you enjoyed the segment, and as always, we really appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, please share with your friends, subscribe, and ring the bell. Berian Kindle Kennard. Berian Kennard Upshaw. Yeah, okay. Okay. Berian Kennard Upshaw. His name was. <laughs> uh, his name is. Berian Kennard Upshaw. His name was. <laughs> was Beniam Kennard Upshaw. Oh, I'm so sorry. The Texas newspaper reported that one. <laughs> I hate his name. <laughs> because he has such a bad attitude. It is Burian. Yeah, yeah. Burian. What a name. What a, why couldn't he have a normal name? I hate his name.